we're going to get to negative exponents today. Um, but first, we're going to look at how negative exponents might come about and how we can make them make sense with the rest of the exponent work we've been doing. So let's start by going back to the very basics and let's have a look at something like a to the power of 5 over a cubed. So a to the power of 5, we know is a times a times a times a times a. 5 a's multiplied together, a cubed, 3 a's multiplied together. And remember when we started off with this stuff, we said, okay, so what would that mean? It would mean that the three A's at the bottom would cancel with three of the A's at the top, and you would be left with A times A, which is just A squared. And we did a few of these examples, and that eventually led us to see, well, actually, we didn't have to go and write it all out each time. We could, in fact, see that really the way to get to this A squared really quickly would be to say you have five A's at the top, but cancel three of the a's at the bottom, and so you were left with a to the 5 minus 3, which is a to the 2. So we developed that rule when you're dividing two numbers, you subtract the exponents. All right, how does that help us get to negative exponents? Well, let's have a look at this scenario here, right? If we've got a cubed over a to the 5, then what you've got Going right back to the definition is you've got three a's multiplied together at the top and five a's multiplied together at the bottom. And in the same way, we can then cancel three of the a's at the top with three of the a's at the bottom. And in this case, what you're going to be left with is one over a squared. All right, but we already had a rule that helped us to say that if you had two numbers divided by each other, the quick way to get the answer would be to say the top power, top exponent minus the bottom exponent, right? Just like we did here with the 5 minus 3. So we want exactly the same to happen here. We want to be able to apply that same kind of rule here, even when you've got a smaller power at the top. So what would that rule mean here? We would have 3 minus which would be minus 2. And so what makes sense is that we say that a to the minus 2 has to be the same as 1 over a squared. It's the only way it can make sense. And so arising out of that discussion, what we have is the following definition, that a to the power of minus m must be equal to 1 over a to the n. And that's as long as a isn't 0, right? If it's 0, everything's going to be a problem because we can't divide by 0. So for any number except 0, a to the power of minus m just means 1 over a to the n. All right, so this can get a little bit confusing, so let's just make sure we've got the idea. And just check to see if you've got the idea. Tell me... Pause the video and just try and see if you can figure this out. What is the difference, right, between that and that? What will this one be equal to? What will this one be equal to? Are they the same thing or a different thing? Pause and try. Okay. The difference is a big difference, right? When the negative is sitting here in the exponent, so in that exponent area, all it means is this thing, 1 over. So what this thing here means is 1 over 3 squared, right? And 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So this is just 1 ninth. In contrast, this negative has got nothing to do with the exponent. It's, the neg it's just a plain old negative. So what you've got here is that this is equal to negative and then what is squared is just the 3, so it's 3 times 3, which is 9. So this thing is negative 9, whereas this one is 1 over 9. So when your negative's in the exponent, it means 1 over. This negative is just a negative. Okay, so we've got the core idea. When we see the negative in the power, it simply means 1 over that, right? 
which is this. Now, of course, we can start playing with things that have got negative exponents. So, you see, if we had something like this, what on earth will that be equal to? Well, actually, it turns out quite sweetly, right? Because, okay, we know we've got 1 over. Now, what does 5 to the power of negative 2 mean? It means 1 over 5 squared, right? So, what is this? It's saying this 1 divided by 1 over 5 squared. And if you remember your rules for division by fractions, we are keep change, and we flip this to 5 squared over 1. And so this becomes 1 times 5 squared over 1, which just becomes 5 squared over 1, which is 5 squared. So notice here, because this is going to be a very helpful shortcut to notice. If we have it at the top of a fraction, when we see the negative, all it means is it brings it down to the bottom of the fraction. On the other hand, if we have it at the bottom of the fraction with its negative exponent, all it means is bring it up to the top of the fraction. Okay, so repeating what I've just said, if you've got x to the minus p, it just means bring it to the bottom of the fraction so it becomes 1 over x to the p. And if it was at the bottom of the fraction, 1 over x to the minus p, it just comes up to the top of the fraction. So this means that we can sort of sort out stuff like if we're given this 3 to the negative 2 over 2 to the negative 3, what's that e actually equal to? Well, this 3 to the negative 2 has a negative power and it's at the top of the fraction. So it just means 1 over 3 squared. So it comes to the bottom of the fraction. This 2 to the negative 3 is at the bottom of the fraction. And so what we can do is bring it to the top of the fraction and make it positive. And so we've got that this is 8 over 9. OK, check you've got it. Here are two for you to do. Pause the video now and do this in your homework books. And um, what you want to do here is just um, make sure, I want you to rewrite both of these with positive exponents only. Pause and do it. OK, so let's just check. This thing here, just um, be very careful, right? This power, the negative 5, only goes with the x. It doesn't affect the 6 at all. If we wanted it to affect the 6, we would have had to put the whole thing in brackets and then the negative 5 there, right? That would mean that that whole negative was affecting everything here, right? But we haven't got it like that. We've just got x to the negative 5. And we've got 6 there, over there. So that 6 is not affected. So the 6 just stays where it is. x to the negative 5, well, what must it do? It must head to the bottom of the fraction. So it's going to be x to the 5. And this one hopefully was very easy. That's just x cubed. Let's finish with two nice messy examples. Imagine for each of these what we want to do is write them simplify them nicely and write them with positive exponents only. Okay, so let's deal with this one first. We've got um, the negative 2 is just a negative 2. doesn't have any powers, so it stays where it is. The x cubed, well, that just stays where it is, doesn't need to change. The y to the negative 2, because we're wanting to write everything with positive powers, we need to take it down and it'll become y squared. And this z to the negative 5, right, just becomes z to the 5 up there. And that's as far as we can go because we've now got x, y's, and z's, right, and a number. Nothing else can combine. So we're left just with that. OK, let's turn our attention to this slightly more. Let's deal with this thing. All right. The 5 stays where it is. This revolting thing here, well, we've just got to apply one of those leading things, right? We know that if you have a, b to the power of something, it becomes a to the power of something, b to the power of something. In other words, it must be, this must be squared, and that must be squared. So what do we get here? We get x to the minus 3 squared becomes x to the minus 3 times x to the minus 3, which is x to the minus 6, right? Because when we're multiplying, 
right? We've got x to the minus 3 squared. And remember our rule here, we just say it's minus 3 times 2. And here we've got y squared squared, right? And so we're going to say 2 times 2, which is 4. And let's leave this other stuff over here now. Okay. The 5 still doesn't have anything to do. Here, what we've got is we've got x to the negative 6 over x to the negative 2. And in fact, we know we've got a rule, right? That if you've got x to the power of a over x to the power of b, we can say it's x to the a minus b. Now, it doesn't matter to us that those are sometimes negative numbers. So it's fine. What we have here is x to the minus x minus minus 2. And with the y's, we have y to the 4 minus minus 3. So this becomes 5 x to the minus 6 plus 2, y to the 4 plus 3, and that is 5 times x to the minus 6 plus 2 is x to the minus 4, and y to the 4 plus 3, y to the 7. And they wanted us to have everything with positive powers only. Well, 5 is fine. Y to the 7 is fine. But x is x to the negative 4. So we must send it down and make it x to the 